Hi. So, what is electromagnetic braking? What are eddy currents? Well, today I'm going to discuss both and to start off, I'm going to give you a small demonstration first. I have here a small stick with a piece of copper attached to it. Here I have a fairly strong rare earth magnet and as you can see, the magnet itself is not attracted to the metal. If I start swinging it, you can see it moves fairly freely and continues to swing for a reasonably length of time. But what if I now actually start it to swing and then bring my magnet really close to it without touching? As you can see, the piece of metal slows down reasonably quickly. So what's going on? Well, that's all about eddy currents, which leads us to our understanding of electromagnetic braking. So here we have the situation that you've just seen. So I have a magnet and I have this piece of metal which is going to pass through the magnetic field. Now we have here the magnet where the North Pole is basically on our side of this metal strip and the South Pole would be on the other side. Now that's difficult for us to actually see what's going on. So it's helpful if we then also have another view where we can see from the top perspective. So this motion of the metal strip here corresponds to the motion of the metal strip here. And what I've done here is just give you a representative of the North Pole and the South Pole. Now I know in the section that you saw earlier, I had a single magnet, but what I'm demonstrating here is going to apply equally as well. First of all, we know that when we move this metal through the actual magnetic field, we're going to have the metal move across magnetic field lines. Now, according to this, those magnetic field lines look something like this. And I'm going to just use a yellow color here. They're going to be moving from the North Pole to the South Pole. And of course, they should be nice and perpendicular. But of course, outside that, they would arc a little bit over. So what we're getting here is that we're getting a fairly constant magnetic field here. But as we move out this way and move out this way, the magnetic field changes or more specifically in the magnetic flux density changes. And so the magnetic flux is also changing beyond the actual magnets at this point here. So the question is, is what occurs here? Well, we have this metal strip that is at a conductor and it's moving in a changing magnetic flux. So it's increasing in flux as it enters here and it's decreasing in flux as it leaves here. Now, what happens in the metal is a production of small eddy currents. And the best way to show you what the eddy current looks like is the eddy current would occur somewhere in front and somewhere behind because we're going to get a changing flux in front and behind the magnet here. But the question is, is what is the direction of these eddy currents that are taking place? And to help us understand that, we need to remind ourselves of Lenz's law. And Lenz's law says that the polarity of an induced current will always be such that it opposes the thing that changes it. And so how are we going to work that out? Well, if we're going to get an eddy current over here, it's going to produce a magnetic field that opposes the motion. So in the case that is right here where my mouse pointer is, this section is moving away from these magnets. So what we want to do is generate a small magnet, so to speak, that opposes that motion. Now it's moving away. So we want some sort of a magnet here that is actually attractive. So it would look a bit like this. Now I'm not, this is not a physical magnet, but it's just supposed to represent the magnetic field that we want here. So if this is moving away, then we want a little magnet here that will want to attract back to that direction. Similarly speaking, if this is moving towards these magnets over here, we want a little eddy current here that opposes it. So we want it to repel. So it's going to look something like this. And again, if we have this trying to enter the magnetic field, there's going to be a repulsion here. Now, if you want to now work out the direction of the current, now that we have the view 
of what these little magnets look like, we all we need to now is to use our right hand grip rule. And so our right hand grip, grip rule would be such that if I move, grab a magnet and grab it in the direction where the thumb is pointing towards the North Pole, my fingers represent the flow of current in that coil. So as you can see my fingers are curling up and out. So from a side perspective over here, then what, what does that look like? Well, that's going to look like a current that is going to go in that direction. Similarly speaking, if I now look at the reverse here, I'm using my right hand grip rule and I place that over to point my arrow points where the North Pole is, you can see my fingers are curling in the opposite direction. And so again, if you're looking from this perspective over like this direction, which is what we were really wanting, you can see that this direction is in the counterclockwise or anticlockwise direction. And so there you have it, you have two eddy currents forming on either side of my magnet as a result of the fact that the metal is moving through the coil to produce these eddy currents. Now this is a little different though if I were to use the magnets. If I were to move the magnets, then the magnets obviously will be relatively moving in the opposing direction, so the reverse would happen. You can try that yourself and think that through as a way of understanding this. Because of the fact that these eddy currents oppose the motion, we have in essence a braking effect. And of course the braking effect means that we often refer to this as electromagnetic braking. A number of industrial applications use this by simply moving magnets near metals that are moving and thereby uh, slowing down that metal due to the production of eddy currents. I hope that's helped you understand eddy currents and electromagnetic braking. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.